Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I'm joined by a senior from the Ferris State hockey team, Justin McKillian. Uh, Justin, thank you so much uh, for coming on the podcast today. How's everything going? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's going well, just starting off the semester, so it's been a rough couple days this week, but we're getting through it. I feel like se- se- uh, spring semester, senior year, is like probably one of the easier ones, right, if I'm not mistaken, just because you're taking classes you're more interested in? Yeah, um, I have a, I have like one tough class this semester and the rest are, it should be easier, but we'll see how it goes. My, it, it'll be tough, but I think it, the hardest part will be just trying to get through classics. I just have no motivation whatsoever because I'm just so close to being done. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. Um, like senior year of high school, that's kind of how I was feeling. So I'm assuming yeah, it's exactly. the same way in college too. Oh yeah, it's it's. I think it's even worse in college because I just like have no will just to do anything. I come home from the rink, go to class, and I come home. And I'm like, I got to do homework right now. This is sickening. Yeah. Well, luckily, I don't start s- spring semester until next week. It feels like your school started pretty early. Yeah, we just started on Monday, so that you guys are lucky. I have a whole another week just to relax and do nothing. So oh, yeah, take no. advantage of it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'm definitely trying to because once school starts, it, things become way more hectic. Yeah. But I guess at the time of this recording, um, regarding the hockey for yourself, your team was swept by uh, Mankato, uh, who's the number one team in the country at right now. So I guess, like, what would you, you take away from that tough series? Because um, obviously they're, they're a tough team, but your team beat them earlier in the year. So they're, you're definitely capable of competing with a team like that. Yeah, um, I think it's always tough to go into Mankato and play them. You know, they're a really well-structured team, like everyone knows. You know, it's Mankato. Like, when we go there and play against them, you know, we always try our best just to, like, uh, you know, hang around and just give them a good game. But um, I think what hurt us a lot was just coming off a break. It was our first weekend back. Because um, we were playing really good, some really good hockey, like, before break. And then the break came and we took that two, three-week period off. And then coming in, playing against Mankato right away is definitely not ideal. But we were up for the task. Um Unfortunately, obviously, it didn't go our way. They uh, they won both, but it just they're just a very very hard team to play against. Like you can't really, there's it's hard to find flaws in their game. That's for sure. Yeah, no. Oh, how much practice time did your team get in before um, like the series? Because I know like with break, like there's certain rules of how much practice time you can get in um, um, before you head back to school or before you once you get back to school. Yeah, um, I think we. If I remember correctly, we came back January 30th and we practiced from the 30th all the way until we went to Mankato on the 7th. So we were pretty busy. We were practicing and just unfortunately things didn't go our way. Now, I guess what was the difference, I guess, between this series last week versus the one you played at home um, in November? Was there any differences you noticed um, between those two series? And how are you going to, I guess, um, how do you compare them and how are you going to use it, I guess, heading into the second half of the year? Um, yeah, I think one of the biggest parts is our rink is um, a lot of teams don't like coming to, to our rink and playing there just because it, it has a smaller feel to it because, you know, it's a um, the stands are kind of right on top of you. And when we get a lot of fans, it's hard. It's a tough place to play and, you know, practicing there all the time. You know, we're pretty used to practicing and playing there. So um, teams just struggle when they come to our place. And I think we were lucky enough to take advantage of them the one night that we beat them. Um, I can't really sit here and pick pick out what exactly it was that that it was that um we ended up beating them but um you know it we were just like we worked really we're a really hard working team you know we're you know a lot of a lot of teams oversee us and they don't really see us for what and who we are just because of the past couple of years we've had but we have a really good group of guys in that locker room that are willing to work and um you know put in the time and it, it showed that one weekend against Mankato when we got that win but um, like I said, you know, it just comes down to hard work and executing our game plan. Yeah, no, I feel like we're from Minnesota State, like they have a lot of guys who've been there for such a long time, which I think yeah. is definitely a big th- reason. But then they're also, I feel like when they score a goal, they just keep piling it on and on and on. Like it's one of those things where like they're just lethal offensively, but they know how to like, they're such structurally defensive as well, where it's like hard to like score goals on them, but they know how to score so many goals on their opponent. Yeah, like their their defensive core is really good. You know, they have a really good goalie and Dryden McKay. Obviously, he just set the college, the NCAA like shutout record over Ryan Miller this year. Um, and they're offensively, they have so many weapons. It's just they're a tough team. It's just, they're just a tough team to beat. Yeah. Um, 
and once they once they get going they, it's really hard to stop them but like I said thankfully we we did it the one time when they came to us but we we're wishing for more but you know we'll, we'll take it now speaking of your team your team has improved significantly record-wise compared to last season Mike talk about the improvements I guess your team has made in over the past year and I guess like what your team do during the off season to kind of make those improvements yeah well first off I mean last year was just a tough year um beginning with like me just per, from personal reason I um I got injured like at the beginning of February I tore my labrum in my shoulder so I had to get surgery and was out for that second half of the year basically and uh you know first off just like being in the stands like watching it was just really tough just to not be a part of like part of the group like on the ice I, obviously you're around the locker room and stuff but you know it's not the same when you can't go out on the ice with the team and you know like battle with them but um, I think we all had a chip on our shoulder from from last year coming into this year just because we know we're we are way better than what we were last year and uh, you know we came in with a workman mentality and uh, put in a really big off season and we had a I think we had a like most of our guys came to campus in August and we all uh you know, got together as a team, you know, we were skating every day, working out, you know, doing some team bonding stuff, you know, just be trying to become like a really close knit group. And I think we are a really close group. And I think that's part of the part of our success so far. And um, hopefully it can keep going up from here. But um, yeah, just like I said, that uh, chip on our shoulder from last year, just because we weren't really happy with last year by any means. Was it weird watching the games without any fans? I feel like that's got to be weird, too. Because at least when you're injured, you get to be part of like that um, atmosphere. Right. Um, I think, well, at one point we had, like, there's a certain amount of fans, like, allowed in. But for the most part, yeah, it was just, it was just weird because you're sitting in the stands, like, just all by yourself. I mean, with the, uh, the other guys that aren't playing as well. But, um, yeah, it was just weird. It was just a weird experience. It was just – you can just say last year itself was just a really weird experience. But, yeah, um, yeah just happy to be done and over with that for sure. Now, um, did you get to um, travel last year if you were not playing? That's something I didn't. I don't think a lot of people have talked about because I don't know what, like, restrictions if they allowed, like, anyone in the stands or not if you want um, to play. Yeah, well, I think with uh, what the WCHA or the CCHA rules, you like, in conference games, I don't know what the amount of players you can travel, but I think it's, like, 20, 23 or 24 guys you can travel. And then, obviously, like, the two or three guys, like, won't dress and they'll sit in the stands. Um, and I think that's as you can only take like a certain amount, but for home games, anyone can, um, yeah, obviously like come if you're not playing. But, um, travel wise, I think it was just that I don't think there's any like certain restrictions or anything. Now, one thing I love about this season that we didn't get to have last year, which is something I kind of took for granted to be honest with you, was non conference games. I guess for a player, what's it been like to play those again? And, um, um, I guess, like, um, how, how important are they for your team just because they don't mean anything for the standings, but I think you can gain a lot from playing some certain non-conference teams. Yeah, you know, I, I personally love them. It gives you a chance, you know, to kind of get outside of your conference, obviously, and, you know, play some new teams that you usually won't see every other weekend like you do in conference. Um, I think they're fun, you know. Like, we had some long, some long road trips at the time that I've been here. And like, like, for example, we went to Canisius this year and, uh, you know, that, that road trip, it was just a fun road trip. Like Buffalo is a neat city to be in and you're on the road with all the guys, like the bus rides and, you know, the team camaraderie just kind of gets up there and, you know, everyone just, you know, hangs out. Cause that's all we have, you know, we we're no one else is there that we know we're just with the team and, you know, we're doing team dinners, team lunch, team breakfast, all that sort of stuff. So, um, I love out of conference games. Like it gives you, um, it also can work in your way with confidence as well, just cause, you know, you know, like I said before, you know, you don't see those teams often. And you know, if you beat them, then they, you kind of, everyone else kind of takes notice to what other teams you can beat and play with. So. Yeah. And you got two massive non-conference wins this year. You beat Miami, Ohio and Canisius as well. And um, talk about how important those wins were for your team, especially against Miami since uh, they're an NCHC team. And I feel like people like think that's like the best conference in college hockey. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we're really happy with uh, beating both those teams. Unfortunately, I, we split with both of them. And we, our team believes that we should have won, you know, all four of those games. Those were games that we had, you know, we were winning and, you know, we, we lost the lead, unfortunately, which unfortunately happens here and then, but that just happened to us a little too much in the beginning of the year. And we weren't happy with that. But at the end of the day, you know, to get a win against Miami was big for us. I think that was the first weekend we played. So, um, it was good confidence-wise, you know, going up against, you know, other teams just because, you know, we know we can hang with 
you know, those teams, just like Minnesota State. So beating Miami was good. Beating Canisius was was really good as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good. Good times all around. But like I said, you know, you hope for, for winning all four of those games. Now talk about what it's like playing in the CCHA. And I guess, is it, does it feel any different than the WCHA or not really? I guess um, not going to Alabama I mean, might, might stink a little bit because that seems like a fun trip. Yeah, yeah. I actually, like, side note, like, I loved going to Alabama. Like, it was a uh, – it's a tough road trip for us. It's pretty long on the bus. But, um, you know, they have a great setup down there. Their rink is really nice. You know, they treat us really well down there at the locker room and our whole setup down there. And I just loved playing down there. I thought it was a good atmosphere to play in. But, um, you know, there's really – not a huge difference between, you know, the WCHA and the CCHA, like at least like player wise, like on the ice, like it's just like when we play against like Northern or Bowling Green, it's just another game against, you know, one of those two teams. Um, But I will say I do notice a lot different with the CCHA is like our media attention. Like they do really well with like media and the CCHA. They've they've, um, taken up a notch on that as to like, you know, they're posting highlights, you know, clips of this, clips of that. And, you know, trying to get, you know, the CCHA out there, you know, but, um, and I think it's, it's building for sure. I think a lot of people like know what the CCHA is or what they did know from in the past with like Michigan, Notre Dame, Michigan State, Miami, like all those top schools. So it's good to have it back for sure. I think our commissioner's done a really good job, you know, handling everything. So nothing against the WCHA at all. They were great as well, but I think the CCHA has held their standards a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with the media thing. Like, just watching some of your games, like, it seems like the streams are more, like, I guess, yeah. cleared or what seems more professional, I think, is the best way to put it. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree with you 100%. So, And obviously the logo is different, too. That's, like, another difference. Yeah, I love the logo, you know. Yeah. I, uh, the WCHA logo is good, too. You know, I was – I played in Walnut Conference for three years and now the CCHA. But, I mean, it's cool. It's cool to see it back on because when I was growing up watching college hockey, you know, it was the CCHA, right? So it's yeah. kind of cool to be playing in the same conference. Yeah, and then obviously the Alaska trip must have been fun too. Do you, are you going to miss that? Um, I went I went one time. It was my sophomore year. We were there for two weeks in a row. Oh, wow. It was over like Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving breaks. We went to Fairbanks for the first week, and we f- went right from Fairbanks to Anchorage and just stayed there for two weeks. Um, I definitely won't won't miss it that's for sure but it was fun while we're there but trying to stay up with like school and stuff where there was was tough but uh I don't know I don't know how guys like at least in Fairbanks I don't know how guys live there like it was just like I just did not enjoy my time my time in Fairbanks but um you know it's just dark all the time you know it's yeah like, um, you know, we'd wake up and go to the rink at, you know, eight thirty nine or 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, practice. And we were there for a week, so we'd be at the rink. We'd practice, work out, eat lunch there. And just about by the time we'd be leaving the rink, like, the sun would be down already. And you're, like, go back to your hotel room. And it's, like, three thirty, four 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you're, like, it's already pitch dark outside. Yeah. So, um, but, no, I mean, like I said before, like, the trips were great. They were fun for, like, you know, team bonding and stuff like that, just being with the guys. But. Ultimately, I won't, won't really miss it too much, but um, but it was fun while it lasted, you know. Yeah, that's kind of crazy that you can go to, like, some place like Alaska where it's, like, freezing cold, pitch black, and then you go to Alabama the next week and, like, you're wearing shorts. I don't know if teams ever did that back and forth, but that must have been weird. Yeah, that was – it would be really weird to do that. I know that's, like, just, like, coming back from Alaska and trying to get back on, like, your time schedule and, you know, your the jet lag and all that was just, like, tough with school and, like, practice and stuff, so – you know, I give the guys on Alaska credit that they're traveling like every other – whatever it is, like every weekend, every other weekend, maybe this year. Because I don't know if they – I don't know what their yeah. schedule's like this year. But yeah, I give those guys credit for, you know, and like traveling every other week, just like going through all that. Like that's got to be tough. Oh, yeah. Was there anything to do in Fairbanks? Was that another reason why you didn't really enjoy it? Because I've always wanted to visit Alaska. It seems like super nice, just like the glaciers and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, it was really cool to, like, look around and stuff. Like, we saw, like, there was, like, moose, like, right outside our hotel. Like, it was really cool. But for us, like, Fairbanks are really – but maybe just because we got there, like, earlier – like, we got there on, like, a Wednesday morning. And we, like, practiced Wednesday, Thursday, then played Friday, Saturday, then left. And we spent a whole week in Anchorage. So, maybe that's why it was a little bit better. But when we were in Fairbanks, there really wasn't a whole lot to do. Mm -hmm. Now, with, like, Anchorage – I didn't realize, like, Anchorage was, like, an actual, like, huge, like, city. But we were, when we were there, like, we went, like, sightseeing. Like, we were going around, like, the city and stuff, like, doing stuff as a team. 
and it was it was fun and we went and saw like like the mountains and all that stuff so i mean it was enjoyable i mean like I, i'm not saying fairbanks is a horrible place i'm just saying like i personally didn't enjoy it as much yeah. as i did anchorage so no i definitely want to visit alaska so, at some point but i think it's cool that they have a hockey team there I'm not gonna lie yeah. i wish more states like did that i wish like like I know Arizona State does it too. I wish more states like out in the, like the western part of the U.S. had college hockey. I don't understand like why they're so hesitant to put it out. You would do better with it than some other sports, to be honest. Yeah, it really would. Like, like even like in the South, like those Southern teams, like the SEC schools, they actually do really well with their hockey programs. Like even though they're like club programs, or I don't know if they're club or D three or what they are, but like they get like some really good like good amount of fans. And like I was talking to one of my friends who has a friend that plays down there and he said that like they treat him like like really well down there so they actually do like surprisingly well like you wouldn't think so but they actually do but I agree too I think like you know like California would do like really well like Seattle like Oregon whatever other else you Nevada, have like UNLV like Vegas area yeah. like UNLV USC UCLA oh yeah that'd be cool like that'd be, that'd be like a Pac-12 division I think it'd be cool yeah, and plus teams from other conferences would want to go there just because it will be a cool trip, and it would right, also like, help those programs grow. Right, like if USC comes calling, like, hey, you want to come to town and play us this weekend or whatever weekend of the year, like, yeah, like I wouldn't <laughs> mind going to USC for the weekend. No, no, that will be cool. And then SEC, like I know, like I've always wanted to see an SEC football game. It looks like a great atmosphere, but I feel like that would be cool, cool college hockey atmosphere to go to, and I think it would be fun. Like I would love personally as like a media person to go down south and like watch hockey and do that kind of stuff yeah yeah that'd be awesome i think you should definitely look into that that'd be cool like i mean i can't imagine what an sec football game would be like but like hockey i think hockey would be cool too you know all their sports down there like do pretty well like basketball too so football mm -hmm. just i think takes over everything down oh, there yeah. so well i worked for a summer baseball league and a lot of the guys played in sec schools and sec baseball is like no joke like it's pretty like serious yeah. like they have like a lot it's like kind of cool like the student sections that they have like at baseball stuff like I, I never really knew too much about it but it's pretty intense especially like vanderbilt like that's like the yeah. best baseball school in the country yeah like there's just like those schools that you don't usually think about a lot that like do really well for themselves like i'm trying to think of other like like baseball school like Texas is usually a pretty good baseball school. Like, uh, well, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but a lot of those schools do really well. Like LSU, obviously Alabama, Auburn, like, and even like their golf programs do like really well too. Yeah. I think it's just easier because it's warmer most of the year. We're like yeah. here in the North, like it's kind of hard to have baseball sometimes because you can't play like in certain months of the year because it's freezing cold. So that's like right. the only, like, I think that's partly why, but yeah, no, it's kind of cool. Um, just like how all the schools, like, um, how popular all the sports are in different school. Like I know like a guy like who, who was on our team, he's projected to be like a top five dra draft pick in the MLB draft next or this year. And he uh -huh. played for like some school called Cal Poly, which I've never heard of. Yeah. Like there's like all these Southern small schools in California, which produced like some high end baseball players. Yeah. Well, it's weird too. Cause even like MLB is like weird with their draft, but like there's guys out of like Michigan that go to like D three schools or like, like that get drafted. Or, like, usually they get drafted right out of high school, which is, like, really uncommon for, like, hockey players unless, like, you're on, like, the NTDP or something like that. But, like, uh, there's just, like, baseball is just one of those sports you can kind of go just from anywhere. So it's kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, well, I feel like I feel like the hockey draft is so much better, first of all, how they do it. It's much easier to understand. There's seven rounds, um, which in baseball there's, like, 30 rounds. So, like, I don't know how those GMs, like, find scouts to do all that stuff. But, like, yeah. an MLB dra NHL draft, it's, like, you, you have a certain age group where you can get drafted, and then it's, like, it's yeah. kind of easier to understand personally. It's, like, you're not used to it. Yeah. For us for us late bloomers, we kind of wish the NHL draft was, like, something like football where you could, like, declare for it. Yeah. Even, but, but, yeah, I think overall the NHL does really well. I think the way they have their draft, it's worked for so many years. Like, why change it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, so. I feel like the one thing they should do is they should, like, let, like, N NHL teams draft college players, like, if they're, like, juniors and seniors. Because I feel yeah. like you get more, like, late bloomers, like, get drafted when they're juniors or seniors in college. That's what yeah. – that's the only thing I wish the NHL did. Yeah. I think it would be it'd, – well, it would be interesting to see, and but it would benefit someone, you mm -hmm. know, because there's a lot of, like – there's a lot of, like, hidden gems in college hockey, I think. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of guys are – late bloomers that aren't necessarily ready to make that huge jump at like 18 years old. Yeah. So, 
it'd be cool to see for sure. Yeah, and I feel like some kids get drafted when they just aren't ready, and like then yeah. they got all this pressure on them when they're like in like high school, which I don't think is necessary. So I think that'll be good. I think that could eliminate that as well. Uh, for sure, yeah. Most, yeah, when you're like that young too, like and you get drafted, and then like you just it's like a it's a big head game too. I think for the most part, like a lot of those kids, like they take it to the head, which is good. I mean, good for them. They're they're getting drafted. They're doing something right, but at the end of the day, like, they're so young, there's so much potential there, but they could, you know, ruin it so easily, I feel like, mm-hmm. which is just a, another, which is just a downfall, but um, most kids do really well for themselves, thankfully, but yeah, I think that could be one thing, yeah. I don't know, maybe, I feel like they should just have that, they should obviously keep the rules the way they are, but I just think they should just make it, like, where, like, anyone can get drafted, like, yeah. if you're, like, a, in college, for example, like, a junior or senior, you can get drafted, like, like, you don't have to, like, sign, like, a I guess there's like some benefit to it because when you graduate college, you could sign wherever you want. But right. I feel like that'd be kind of cool, like for juniors and seniors in college to get signed or get drafted if um, they were kind of like late bloomers and juniors. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. So I agree with you there. <laughs> now you're a senior, obviously this year. So um, I guess what type of leadership have you tried to bring to the team? Are you more of a vocal or lead by example type of player? Um, I try and do a little bit of both, but. Um... You know, I was like a freshman and sophomore. I was kind of more of like a quiet guy on the team and just kind of went out there and, you know, went on the ice and tried to do my thing. But um, but now I, I kind of try and be both. I try and be like, you know, really well-rounded on the ice and, you know, benefit the team and do a bunch of good things. But then as well, like in the locker room, like I like to have a voice as well as, you know, other guys too. You know, it's not just, you know, us leaders. You know, anyone can have a voice in the room. But um, I like to be to be vocal for sure. Um, especially just whether it's trying to motivate someone or just trying to get someone out of like a slump or if they're down on themselves, just to try and help them out as, as much as I can. So I think, I think being a vocal leader is pretty important in, in the room, but obviously you got to back that up on the ice as well. So. Yeah. And for you specifically, you, you, your team is a little bit more like older, I guess, than other teams in college hockey. Does that change your leadership style as all not having as many like freshmen and sophomores on the team? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I think what we try to do this, at least this year we tried to do was, um, you know, when everyone came in, um, we just tried to make sure that everyone was comfortable with themselves and, you know, comfortable in the room. And like, you can say, say what you want. Like no one, just cause you're a freshman doesn't mean you can't say anything or, you know, you're a sophomore or you're a younger guy, like you have the right to say whatever, whatever you want. If it, if it means it's going to help the team out, you know, if you need to say something and get it off your chest and say it, and um, I think we did it. We've done a really good job with that this year. Because I talking about like the non-conference games, we actually did that in Canisius. We uh, it was a Saturday morning. We lost Friday night, and that Saturday morning we had a t- players-only meeting. We sat down in the hotel room, just like sat in a meeting table, and opened up the whole room to like whoever wanted to talk, whoever wanted to say, just say anything they wanted to say, what they were thinking. And it helped us for sure. So um, that's kind of the thing that we've been trying to just get through the room is like, if you need to say something, say it like everyone, everyone can be a leader. So Mm -hmm. there's not really, I mean, there's like, there's not like a rookie and like a, we don't like to like call people like rookies, you know, it's just more of like, you know, yeah, you're a freshman, but you can still have a big part of this team. So. Yeah, that's awesome because I know I was listening to like an interview with like Sedan Chara and he was obviously the captain of the Bruins. And one thing he said, he never called rookies rookies. He always called them first year players just because like if you make the NHL, like you shouldn't be considered like I, there's like you should be treated a certain way if you made it the NHL. So I think that's kind of cool that your team like still treats everyone the same, no matter like whether they're a freshman or senior on the team. Yeah, well, like I was like the, the freshman, they got to help like when we get go on road trips and come back from road trips, like they got to do the little things, you know, like help, you know, the equipment managers, you know, mm-hmm. pack up the bus or, you know, clean the bus up after a road, just little things like that. But I think for the most part, like we're a pretty well, a well-rounded team. Like I said before, we're a close group and, you know, no one really sees anyone as like higher or lower on the totem pole. We're all kind of like one big group. Now, I guess we talked about improvements that your team has made. What improvements, I guess, have you made this year as a senior? Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was that um, our coaches tried to get get to me on was my uh, defensive zone play. Um, and my, just my well, my whole, you know, 
200 foot game to begin with. I, well, personally, like I like to, be, I want to like be a good 200 foot player. I want to be like a reliable and, you know, the, the offensive zone, the de- defensive zone, the neutral zone, you know, really whatever it is, just all over the ice. But um, my first couple of years, I struggled in my, in the, in the D zone. So that was a big thing this year. And uh, I think I've gotten better at that for sure. I've been put on the, the penalty kill, which was, I was never on the penalty kill my freshman, sophomore, junior year. So um, I've improved enough to be on that. And I've kind of taken pride in, you know, being, being a good player in my own zone and, you know, just on the defensive side of the puck, really. Um, and another thing I've been trying to work on, too, is just trying to be a more, you know, in-your-face type player. I was also like a, when I was like a freshman or sophomore or junior, I was like more of like a perimeter player. I really wasn't getting in on the on the plays or just I was hanging around the outside of the rink a lot. So I've been really tr- – trying to, uh, you know, get in on, like, the forecheck, you know, get in in the dirty areas, get the pucks, you know, bang pucks to the net. You know, really, really, really everything. I just try and work on anything and everything yeah. the coaches tell me, so. You know, be that gritty player, get those dirty goals. That's the yeah. best way to score, in my opinion. That's how I try to do it because that's <laughs> sometimes I'm not a, I'm not like a sniper or anything. Like, I sometimes I feel like you have to have a certain skill level to do that, but yeah. anyone can get those dirty goals. You get punched in the face a little bit, but if you get, like, three goals that night then it's worth it in my opinion right yeah exactly I agree so that's that's the biggest thing that uh, a lot of the thing the coaches that they were telling me to the lot the biggest thing one of the biggest things they harp on a lot is good defense leads to good offense so if you're good in your d zone then you'll you'll produce yourself and produce on offense so it just leads to it and thankfully this year I think we've I've done a pretty good job at that so um, it's been going pretty well so far now, being one of those gritty players, like, you get in those scrums, like, how do you handle that? Just because pe- some some of these defensemen, like, hate when you, like, go anywhere near their goalie for some reason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not the grittiest of players. I, like, I try to be, whether it's, like, you know, in on the four checker in the corners, but I try to stay out of the scrums as much as possible. I mean, if I, if I catch myself in one, I'll just kind of mm-hmm. do whatever it takes just to kind of keep myself safe and not get pummeled on. But, um, yeah, that's – it's something in my game, like, I don't really, like, try and do. But, you know, I'll, mm-hmm. you know, if there's a battle in the corner, then I want to be in that battle and take the puck out, out of the corner and, you know, have possession of the puck. You know, that's just kind of the way that I've been taught since I've been here. So, Yeah, especially in the CCHA because I feel like that, that the conference is a little more grittier than the other ones because I don't know if you saw this, but it was like a Mankato Bowling Green game last year. And I thought it was going to be a full-out brawl. Just some of these, like, people were getting in scrums. It was kind of crazy, like, how, like, physical the conferences versus other ones yeah it's a really physical conference you know we have a lot of teams in our conference that are just like to play like that hard nose like physical game and I think that's overseen a lot because I think you know our conference is a very very good conference Mm -hmm. you know we've had a lot of good um, a lot of good teams that have been at the top of the rankings you know you have Mankato obviously that's been there for the past couple years Um, Northern's been very good you know Lake State's been up there Bemidji's always good Um, Bowling Green's always good and then we're we're good too we're usually really good but we're trying to like I said before we've been struggling a little bit the past couple years so we're trying to change the change the way a little bit and then um, St. Thomas is new this year Um, they're good they're a good team too but obviously you know it's their first year they're going to struggle a little bit Um, but they they're still hard-nosed team they play hard so like our conference is just it's really all around like very well-structured conference there's a lot of good teams and anyone can win on any night so Mm-hmm. It's a battle for sure. Have you been to St. Thomas this year? Because that rank looks like some of the youth ranks I used to play in. It seems very yeah, small. We were, yeah, we were there this year. Um, we we ended up splitting with them too, which we were not happy about as well. But, um, yeah, their rank is – it's not ideal for <laughs> sure. But um, they're – I'm sure it's in their, their next – their five-year plan of getting a new rank. Mm-hmm. You know, their, their head coach is a – from my understanding, he's a very well-rounded coach. I've heard a lot of good things about him just from players that I know that have played for, that played for him at Miami of Ohio when mm-hmm. he was there. Um, and I heard they have a lot of support for their program. So I'm sure they're, they're, they're going to be building something really nice here in the next couple of years. But yeah, like I said, as a first year team, it's kind of tough just to walk into this nice arena, you know? So. Oh yeah. Well, it's just weird because like you see Bemidji State and that looks like, like a really like, NHL type rank just a little smaller obviously and then like watching the games in St. Thomas it's just like it's a completely different kind of environment yeah Bemidji has a really nice rank their facilities and stuff are really nice there but I think there's like a 
like a regulation with the ccha that like the rink has to be like a certain like it has to be to a certain degree of like um like a number of people they can fit in like seats yeah yeah something along those lines i think like there's an exception for us because our rink's only like a half a half bowl Mm -hmm. and i think there's an exception just because like we've been in the league or the conference for so long we've been around for so long that it's kind of like a what are they? I don't know what they call that rule when you just kind of you don't have to like fathered in or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what happened with our case. Yeah, so. no, I think um, I personally like what small arenas because one thing I can't stand is when like teams build like these rinks that are like eight nine thousand fans, yet like the atmosphere is horrible since they can't fill it up since their rinks are I think too big. So I like it when it's like a three four thousand size rink where you can fill it every night and it makes the atmosphere so much better. I think that a lot of colleges should kind of focus on that too yeah i i like that for sure like when i was uh, like northern i think has a very nice rink they have like an olympic size sheet and they have a it's like a they have one like bowl it's just like a lower bowl and it fits like i think four thousand or five thousand something like that and they like they do really well for themselves like every night when they're at home and like when we play there the atmosphere is just unbelievable and like same thing like bemidji does really well with their fans Bowling Green does really well. So, like, those are some ranks that are, aren't, like, really, like, huge, but they're, like, big enough to where, like, it makes it, like, a really cool rink to play in. Yeah, no. It's, it looks like St. Thomas is doing well, though, for that, like, the atmosphere-wise. Yeah. Like, people seem to be excited about that team coming there. Yeah. I think, well, it's, it's in Minnesota, too, right? Yeah. Minnesota is, like, big on hockey. Um, you know, they have the University of Minnesota. They have so many teams. They have, like, Duluth, St. Cloud, Bemidji's in there, Mankato. But I think St. Thomas is, like, it's right around, like, Minneapolis, right? I have no clue. I'm not from – I've never been to Minnesota. I'm a Massachusetts kid. So. I think it's, like, close <laughs> to the University of Minnesota. So, yeah. I think they're going to do well. Like, in the next couple of years, they'll do really well with their fan base and stuff. So, it'll be, it'll be like, a like a rivalry type thing oh, yeah. with them and, like, Mankato and University of Minnesota and, you know, all those Minnesota teams. So, it'll be cool. Yeah, that should be fun. Yeah, I know that. I agree with you on that. Now, also for your team this year, you have your twin brother with you. Um, how how cool has that been? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty cool for sure. It's been surreal almost, but um, this it was always we always wanted to play together. Like it was a dream of ours to like play together at the at the uh, Division One level, and it'd be even better to play at the professional level too. But obviously, that's that's a different standard. So. Um, it's been really cool. Unfortunately, it didn't happen the way we wanted it to happen. Unfortunately, with uh, Robert Morris like closing down their program or shutting their program down, but thankfully they just got it. They just got it back for 2023-24. But um, yeah, it was just a tough. Last summer was tough in that sense, trying to see him and all those other kids go through what they did, and it was just I saw it all firsthand. So. Um, it was tough, but at the end of the day, I'm really happy to be playing with them. It's just like the be- at the beginning of the year, like it was just tough to even like, like it didn't even like click in my head. Like it took me a while for it to like settle in with me. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, like we're actually playing together. So it's been really cool. And I've enjoyed every moment of it. So and my parents have loved it too. They can just come to one place and watch us both yeah. rather than having to go to like Pittsburgh one weekend and then the Ferris the one other weekend. So it's been, it's been good for our family for sure. Are you the younger or older sibling? I'm younger. Oh, nice. So does he ever – does he give you any uh, crap about that? I feel like he, twins do that yeah. sometimes. He likes to a little bit, but or he's older than me by one minute. So All right. it's not really not really a huge difference. But, um, but yeah, he likes to try and give me crap here and there. But it is what it is. Now, have your, have your teammates have had any trouble, like, telling you guys apart? Or is that no. – that maybe some be- twins, like I could never tell them apart. Like it's just never gonna happen. That's like, yeah. especially for like some identical twins, like it's just impossible. I don't know how they do that. Yeah, um, I don't think maybe a little bit at the beginning. Like they just they 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 got it pretty quick. I think the coaches had a tough time, tougher time with it than like the, the players. But um, but no, no one really had any issues. But just because they knew me from before. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of uh, similarities, obviously. So it's, it was tough for them at the beginning. Now you both are from Michigan, so I guess I gotta ask, like, how did you start playing hockey? Yeah, um, it's kind of ironic how we started playing hockey. So we both uh, we both started playing soccer when we were younger, and there was like this sports complex right by uh, right by our house we grew up at, and we were playing soccer one night. We were there for one of like the practice nights or whatever with the parents or something like that, and uh, and below the 
below the soccer fields, there was like a roller hockey rink and there was like a game going on. And me and my brother, or my brother and I were walking around. We looked through the window and we, my dad was standing right next to us. And we're like, we were like, we want to do that. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, we were in a learn to skate at, at like the sports complex. It was just roller hockey. But um, so we started off playing roller hockey from like ages, I think like three or four till about, you know, 10. So we didn't really didn't play ice hockey until our second year of Pee Wee, I believe, I think. So that's how it really started for us. We kind of took off. Um, we played like roller for the most part at the beginning. And then we kind of went into a phase where we did both roller and ice. And then obviously as ice started to get a little bit more serious, we uh, made the switch completely to ice hockey. But, but yeah, that's how it all, that's how it all started. So there's a lot of fights in the basement for sure. Oh yeah. Did you win any of them? That's gotta be. I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, I won't give them anything. Yeah. I want them. But with roller hockey, that's kind of a tough like jump from roller to ice. Because I feel like it's actually easier to do roller hockey to ice hockey than ice hockey to roller. Because like for ice hockey, it's once you learn how to stop, like it's pretty easy. And then yeah. like you go to roller, it's like I could not figure out how to stop at all. Yeah. Well, we. It was funny because we started off our first year of ice hockey. We played. Um, it was like we just played house house mm-hmm. hockey by our house or in in one of the leagues. And there was like an open tryout. So like kids would like show up, they'd do like a, like a drill in front of all like the coaches for those teams. And like, they'd actually did like a draft. So me and my brother were like a package deal. Like we we were, we were going to play together. And that was the one thing like we couldn't do, like we couldn't stop. So a lot of coaches like passed, they didn't, I shouldn't say passed up on us, but they just didn't take us just for whatever reason. And one coach like took us both in like the first couple of practices, like, him and like he had like some uh, some high school kids were working with him and the other coaches and they like took me and him to a certain spot in practice and just worked on stopping for like most of the time so mm-hmm. uh, we got it down pretty quickly but um, but yeah it was just a funny experience but it was it wasn't really that tough honestly the the jump from roller to ice honestly it was it got a lot more difficult when you'd be playing one for like a long period of time and try and go back to the other. Cause you'd just be in like a, like if I went back to roller, I'd be in such an ice mode where like, it'd be hard to stop for a little bit, but. Oh yeah. Yeah. That must've been a youth hockey draft. That would, would that will be cool if they had like a setup, like the NFL draft, like first <laughs> overall pick some kid who's like eight years old and like goes in like a suit and walks up, like shakes the coach's hand. Was it like yeah. that or just like you got a phone call or something? Yeah, I mean, that'd be interesting for sure. I just don't know how. <laughs> oh, I don't think the parents would like that at all. But no, <laughs> I don't think so. Not, not one bit. But uh, you, who was your favorite player growing up? Did you watch any hockey or were you more of like a guy who played it? Yeah, no, I was a big, big Red Wing fan growing up. Uh, I kind of grew up in the in the right era because they were, they were dominant or they were dominating in the, the time when I was growing up. So um, I was a big Steve Eisenman guy. Um, I loved it. I've always worn number 19 for him, but um, kind of after he retired, I started watching, uh, I watched St. Louis a lot and I watched closely to, uh, or I watched closely into TJ Oshie. I really liked the way that, you know, he carries himself and how he plays. So I kind of watched him closely growing up when I was playing like AAA and juniors and stuff like that. Oh yeah. The shootout when he scored like five or six yeah. shootout goals. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that guy's yeah it's I don't know what he did or how he did it but whatever he did it worked so I think the goalie was just like mentally like in a pretzel every time he saw him he just knew he couldn't stop him I think that has something to do with that yeah well like he did the same well if you notice if you watch that video he did like the same like thing like he would skate down the same exact way and he was almost lining up to do the same move and he would just change it like <laughs> he would have like one little part that he changed and it worked every single time yeah, so that's 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 what I think about. But no, he's obviously a good player. And then Eiserman's now the GM, so you must be pumped about that. Yeah, no, he's been doing really well with with the Red Wings. Obviously, they've been in a rebuild for the past couple of years, but uh, they're on the uprise for sure. And what he's doing is, and then he just hired Lindstrom the other day. So oh, that's cool. Just another big piece. Yeah, I heard that Cider kid's supposed to be a stud. Same with. Oh Red my Wing. gosh! Yeah, he is a stud. He's so he's so fun to watch, and he's. What eighteen? I don't even know how old he is, but he's young yeah. and he's yeah. good. So yeah, well, that was a surprise pick too, because I think I'm trying to remember if that yeah. was. A, I think that was a 2019 draft. Everyone them to 
to take like Cole Caulfield, I believe, and then they took him, which people were surprised about. And well, he was, I think the kid or Cider was surprised himself because I think there was like a video that came out that like he was like completely in shock when he got picked, mm-hmm. and everyone else was shocked too because he wasn't. I don't know if he was supposed to be that that high of a pick, and whatever Steve Eisman saw in the kid, it paid off because he's he's going to be a very good defenseman for the Wings in the next couple of years. So. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So. Now, you played in the BCHL for the Victoria Grizzlies. Um, how'd you get the opportunity to go to that team? Because um, I cover UConn hockey for another platform, and a lot of guys went to the BCHL, and they said they had a time of their lives there. Yeah. No, uh, BCHL is a great, great league to play, and I loved the two years I played in Victoria. I mean, it's kind of funny how I ended up getting there, though. So um, I got invited – to a camp it was like a top 60 I don't even know what it was called they don't do the camp anymore but they basically invited I think it was like the top 64 kids in where I think not I don't know if it was the country or it must have been something like that I don't really know exactly so don't take my word on it but um and it was the top kids who weren't like drafted or tendered in like the USHL the North American League or didn't have any of their rights with the junior team yet and so you go to – we went to Utah, and we'd stay – we were there for a week, and you'd practice, and you'd practice – we practiced and, like, worked out for a week. You, you know, you did things as a team with, like, the group of guys you're with, whether it was – you know, we went out to dinners. We did, like, all these different activities in Utah, which was really fun. It was an awesome time. We, had, we were in, like, downtown, like, Salt Lake City, I think it was, or Park City. It was in Park City, Utah. And uh, so we practiced for the week and then we played games on the weekend and your coach for your coaches for that week were coaches from like junior teams or junior. I don't know if there's any college teams there, but they were just junior from whether it was the USHL, the North American league, the BCHL, you know, the OJHL, the AJ, whatever, any, any league really. And my coach for that week happened to be the head coach for Victoria, uh, Craig Didman at the time, or he still is the coach there, but and um, I had, and I guess he just really liked the way I played all week. And, you know, he really liked, really liked me. And he came up to me after, after the camp was over. And he's like, I want you to be, be a Victoria Grizzly. And I was like, oh, like, I was just shocked because one, like, before I always, you know, watch, when I was growing up, like, I would watch like junior leagues, like BCHL, and the USHL, like the North American League, like, it'd be really cool, like, playing one of those top three leagues and when he came up to me and said that I was like in shock and I was like what really like no way like actually and he was like yeah and he wanted me to actually go like that very next year but I was already going back to play for uh, Victory Honda at the time and I was uh, going into my senior year of high school so I wanted to finish high school I'll just finish school and go to juniors after and kind of get the full junior experience with no school so um, yeah so then he just kind of throughout that next year just stayed in touch with me and made sure he was just watching me and calling me every so often, making sure that I still wanted to come up there. And then I went up there for camp the following year and made the team and so on and so forth. And now we're yeah. here. So heard Victoria is a nice spot too. Oh my gosh, man. It's an unbelievable place to live. Like I, I want to go back there so bad. Like, um, well, it's the capital of British Columbia. So it wasn't like your average junior hockey town. It mm-hmm. was like, you know, we had things to do you know, outside of the rink, you know, there's a huge city. We could go do things, you know, our billets were really good to us. You know, there's just a lot of, there's like junior B hockey out there. So we'd always go watch games and stuff, but Victoria was an unbelievable place to live. Like if I could go back, I'd go back so quick. Yeah, no, I had a friend or someone. Yeah. He went to Vancouver and he said one of the most beautiful places ever. The, just the whole scenery is beautiful. The city's beautiful. Like everything about it was awesome. He said it was, and I've always wanted to go because of it. Yeah, dude, it is unbelievable out there. Like, I I loved every second. Now that I'm not there or I haven't been there for the past couple of years, like, I just, like, can't mm-hmm. even believe that I was there for those two years because I just, like, took it for granted almost, I feel like, looking back at it. But uh, Victoria itself is just an unbelievable place. Like, if I was to tell anyone that, like, they're asking me about junior hockey, like, I'd for sure tell them about Victoria and, like, try and – like persuade them to go there if they wanted to go that route. But um, yeah, it's just, just, a, and I think the whole like BCHL league, like I might just be biased just because I played in it, but there's a lot of like very cool, like good areas to live and play for and good teams to play for there. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that seems fun. And yeah, it, probably the people there in like British Columbia are super nice and like they're in great shape too. Everyone has told me that too, just because there's so much like exercising you can do out there. Yeah, well, the, well, there's a lot of people that are into like all like the, you know, like the running and like, the, like, cause nature's like a huge thing out there. Like there's oh, yeah, trails, no. like mountains, like, like as a team, like we would go like, go like hiking, not necessarily hiking, but we'd go walk on trails, like through like, you know, the mountains and stuff. And um, like for one, one of our like recovery days, we had like an active recovery day and we actually went and like climbed like a little peak and like from the peak that we were at, like I could see my house from like where I was. Cool. It was. It was just so cool. It's just a cool experience, but yeah, there's a lot of people out there. Like it's just like a, well, Victoria's on the Island too. Right. So it's just like, people are just on like Island time. Like it's just like a completely different mm -hmm. world out there compared to like here in the States. Oh Yeah. And just talking about your time with the Grizzlies, like, um, how did it help prepare you for college hockey? And, like, what do you, like, hockey-wise, what did you, like, um, what was, like, some of the things you accomplished? Um, yeah, well, I think it's just a great league for, like, development. You know, I think um, it helped me a lot because I played against a lot of guys that are now playing at the, at the Division One level, whether they're at the Division One level now or they're at the pro level now. But, um, you know, the league itself, it's kind of ran like a professional league, you know, like – for at least for me when I was in Victoria, like since we're on the Island division, the travel was really easy for us. So a lot of games would be on the road and like we would end up in our own beds at this, like the same night, just cause travel wasn't like, it. like the longest travel we had, I think was three hours mm -hmm. for an away game on the Island. So, you know, there'd be times where we'd play like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then practice, maybe have Monday off practice Tuesday and we'd play Wednesday we had a lot of like weekday games, which I thought was really neat. It broke up the week a little bit. Um, and like I said, just the players that are in that league are just like, at a, they're very high, very highly skilled. You know, that league's known for being a, like a very offensive, like skilled league, not saying I'm a very skilled guy myself, but um, there's a lot of like just upfront offense in that league. And it's, uh, it helps, helps for sure. Just develop for, for the college game. But um and a lot of teams, they, they recruit, like, very highly touted kids, you know. So, there's a lot your, – your, your competition is, is second to none out there. Now, regarding college hockey, like, how did uh, Fair State, like, find you at the BCHL? And what was that process like? Um, yeah, my process with Ferris was probably different than, than most, um, like, for most other kids while they are getting recruited. So, um I don't think the coach that recruited me, name's uh, Coach Famulak, uh, he, I think he watched me my first year out there, but he was also, so Fair State's obviously, it's in Michigan. I played growing up in Michigan. So I think he watched me a lot growing up at like the AAA level, or at least that's what he told me when I, when I first met him. But um, I think he watched me my first year in the BCHL and then I don't think he came to the BCHL showcase my second year, but I know he was watching just from talking to people that, that talked to him. Um, he was watching kind of online. And then I talked to him, I think it was like before Christmas break, I talked to him my second year. And, you know, he just gave me, you know, the up, like it was the first time I talked to him. So he just gave me the whole rundown of kind of what was going on. And, you know, my name's Coach Family, like Fair State. This, you know, kind of gave me the whole like recruiting rundown, what they do with when they're trying to recruit a kid. And, uh and then I really didn't hear from him the rest of the year. Like I knew there was, I had, there was someone that was talking to him that I, that was kind of relaying some information to me back and forth, just like from our coaching staff and stuff that he would talk to. But and then I didn't hear from him until like the, that summer. Cause I was, that was different with my recruiting process. I was kind of waiting for a lot of teams. I talked to a handful, like a good amount of teams, but I was more so playing like the waiting game. And um, I think they called me like, middle of middle of the summer like going into my freshman year and he's like hey we're we're gonna add a forward to the team like what do you think about coming on a visit and I jumped right on and I was like yeah I'm in mm -hmm. do you want me to come up and visit school <laughs> so it was a, a it was a long time like waiting for it, but when it happened it was it just happened pretty quickly yeah that's awesome and yeah now like what's it like when you finally signed the NLI like um is it, it, it's probably like such a, a, like a huge sense of relief. Cause like you worked your whole life for that. Yeah, it was a relief for sure. Um, 
like like before, it was kind of like that summer going into that year was tough just because, like, I wanted to play at the Division One level so bad. I knew I could because I was surrounded by a bunch of kids who went and moved down to that level that I could play with. And I was happy when he came calling. And um, it was just a relief because it's something you work for, you know, like your whole hockey career. And, you know, my brother at the time was already committed to Robert Morris, so I wanted to, I wanted it just as bad because he was already committed to play Division One, and I was like, well, I want to play Division One too, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was relieving for sure. And then when I finally got up here and visited, um, you know, it was a no-brainer for me. And then being around Michigan too, like I always knew a fair state. Like I knew I wasn't ever going to go to like a Mich- like a University of Michigan or anything like that. But, uh, you know, when we were younger, fair state was really good. You know, they went to the national championship, went to the tournament a couple of times. And, you know, my younger self was always like, I thought I think it'd be so cool to play for fair state. And now that I'm like actually here playing for them, I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's awesome, man. At least, at least when you play for Michigan, you uh, at least when you play for Ferris State, you get to play games. I feel like Michigan sometimes, you know, likes to bow out of certain games, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a little shade there, eh? Yeah. But, yeah, I do. I, I know I saw that, too. I, I'm on the same page with everyone else. So. Yeah. It was awesome when the Western players were kind of chirping them about it, too, on Twitter. It's, like, good for them, honestly. Yeah. They will be well, – they're upset, too, because, you know, like, they're a really good team this year, and – uh they, I don't know. Did they beat them earlier? In they the year? did. Yeah, they um yeah. they split a series against yeah. them earlier. So yeah, that was going to be a really cool game, like for everyone to watch and for them. To, I don't like like I don't know the the circumstances. Oh, they bowed out. They try to make it about like COVID when they had enough players to. They were scratching guys the game before the against Tech. So that makes no sense. Like you had enough yeah. players to play that game. Right. So the reason why they did it, I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything that I don't know. But yeah, I. <laughs> I uh, I feel for the Western guys for sure because that would have been a big statement game for them, and oh yeah, you know, they've been really good this year. So I feel for them. That's all. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, kind of, um, we're in the segment I like to call the non-hockey segment. Where I ask you a few non-hockey questions just to get to know you a little bit more off the ice. Yep. First one is, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? A lot of people are gonna make fun of me for this, but uh, Tiger Woods, for yeah. sure. Um, me and my brother and I are huge fans of him, you know, just fr- from everything that he's been through, just to kind of pick his brain about certain situations that he's been in his life. And, you know, he's probably, if not one of the greatest golfers to ever play the game. And, um, you know, I just enjoy watching him. I've grown up watching him and just how dominant he's been, you know, that sense of that instinct that he has that he could just kind of turn on at the flip of a flip of a switch. So, um, I would just love to pick his brain just about certain situations that he's been in, you know, major tournaments that he's like mm-hmm. came back and won. Like when he just came back and won the Masters in 2019, I thought that was like an unbelievable story. You know, just certain things like that, just to sit down and like just pick his brain about anything. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, uh, especially since like he's been through so much, so many things. Um, yeah. That must be kind of, that'd be a cool combo to have. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's that now uh what music are you into um i kind of like anything anything that like just sounds like appealing to my ears i guess but um i'm a big country guy i like country music a lot um Mm -hmm. i like hip-hop i like rap um i kind of i like like house music and like edm just for Mm -hmm. the, the appropriate timing at least but um in the summertime i'm usually like a pretty big country guy um and then probably during the season I try and listen to like hip hop and rap, just kind of stuff that kind of gets me going a little bit just for games. But yeah. Now, if you had to choose one teammate to cook a meal for you, who would you pick? (laughs) That's a tough one. Um, I'd probably have to go with, his name is Marshall Moyes. He, uh, he's a, he's a big uh, food guy. He's always like big on nutrition and all that stuff. So he's always making like, you know, like, Chicken, potatoes, veggies, all that good stuff. So I'll have to go with him. He probably cooks it better than I do. So funniest teammate on the team. Uh Blake Evanel is a clown. So best style on the team beside yourself. I'm just gonna I'm gonna give myself some points here. I'm not even gonna go with a teammate. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a coach, our assistant coach, Coach Fabula. He uh <laughs> He try. He's the, he's our main recruiter. He recruits a lot of the guys that come in. So he's always trying to stay on top of the the fashion game. He always oh, yeah. comes in the room and 
and ask about his style and the guys always give him some crap for it. So I'll give him some points on, or I'll, uh, I'll give him this one just to make him happy a little bit. Yeah. No. Does he wear like any outlander suits or is it more just like, um, like, the no, sh- just like, just like the shoe, like his shoes, like the Lulu, yeah. like Lulu and all that stuff. He just tries to stay on top of the, the fashion game. Does your head coach care about fashion at all or no? Nah? No. no really. <laughs> he's just, he's more of a, he's a, he's an old school guy. Just, you know, for like, I mean, for like games and stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like some coaches wear the same suit every game. Like they don't care. Um, no, our coach, he, he changes his suit up every once. Uh, he changes his suit up. I, I honestly don't mm-hmm. look into it too, too much, but, uh, but yeah, he, he wears different suits, but he goes through the same rotation. I know that for sure. But yeah, that's what I would do too. Honestly, I'm more of a old school guy regarding fashion, just like sweatshirts and like, just like random stuff. Yeah, I kind of like what the like some of the NHL teams are doing. Like they're they're taking away the dress code. And you can kind of. I don't like that at all. I'm the complete opposite. I really? like. I think it's cool when like everyone wears suits. I think it makes it more professional. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, no, it is. I mean, I see both sides, but I think it's like. I mean, I personally like wearing a suit to a game. Mm-hmm. I mean, but then again, when I'm on the road, I just like throw my sweatpants on and like my track suit and like going to the rink. It's just so much more convenient, but. But then again, like, I think it's cool to see, like, some guys that bring some different, like, styles and fashions to, like, the game. Like, sometimes it gets a little bit – a little bit over uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? It's a over the bit, top? Like, you see that in the NBA where some guys yeah, are like, what, I was, that's what exactly are you wearing? Where, <laughs> yeah, I was, that's where I was going. I was going there. That's exactly where I was headed. So, like, like the NBA, like, it's a little bit too overwhelming sometimes. But I think – most like NHL guys are pretty like level headed to where like they keep it like a good demeanor, but mm-hmm. I, I like seeing a different fashion, but I also like the suit game. Like I think the suits are, are good look. So. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. So yeah. now getting back to some hockey questions now, and this is my last one. I always like to ask this to every um, player I have on, but what advice would you give a younger player who's trying to make it to D, the D one level? Um. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably say just, uh, just, focus and worry about yourself don't let you know um don't focus on other people too much like everyone has a different path to uh to where they're they're gonna get um you know there's a lot of outside noise but just kind of stay focused on on the task at hand and just you know work hard and don't let the outside noise bother you because you know there's so many different paths to get where you to get to where you want to go so um I would just say, like, keep working hard, you know, do the right things, do the small things, be a good teammate, be a good person around the rink, you know, be someone that your teammates like to be around. Don't be, don't be all that, you know, like the mad, pissed off, like mopey teammate, just be happy, be at the rink, you know, hockey only lasts for so long, right? Like we got to start our lives at some point. I mean, obviously not if you make the NHL, but um, just be, you know, just be yourself, you know, be a good teammate, you know, do all the right things and good things will come. Now, do you have any shout outs um, before we let you go? Um, we've mentioned a few guys throughout the podcast, but if there's someone you might've forgot about, feel free to shout them out. No, no shout outs. Uh, just to like all my, my coaches, my teammates that I've played with in mm-hmm. the past and grown up, like everyone that's kind of helped me to get, get me to where I am today. Um, whether it's friends, family, friends, family, coaches, teammates, you know, everyone and, Obviously, more importantly, like my mom and dad, you know, if it wasn't for them, I would not be sitting here talking to you probably right now. So um, Mm -hmm. for all their support and uh, motivation throughout the years and all the sacrifices that they've given up for my brother and I, it's I'll never be able to repay them. So thank you guys. But yeah, that's that's really about it. So. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Justin. I really appreciate it. I wish you all the best, I guess, for the rest of the year. I know you're going to do great. And shout out to the Ferris State social media person because they're one of the few teams that follows College Hockey Talk. So I wanted to give them a yeah. shout out in the podcast. Good. Yeah. Good. We have a good media guy. So he does he does a pretty good job with all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, no, thanks for having me. I love being on here. Uh, so, yeah, it was great. It was good meeting you for sure. Um, hopefully we're past across again at some point. But. Mm -hmm. nice meeting you it was nice meeting you as well take care yeah man you too have a good one now one thing i just want to ask you